They say Apple is going to release a new colorful budget line of iPhones in 2018. And if they do, I'm here to tell you they will fail. Let's talk about why. Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is painfully honest tech. Tech so honest. It hurts. Glad to see you. Back from vacation. I've got some things to say about this subject. So let's just get right into it. There's been a bunch of speculation and prognostication about which one of the rumored new iPhones will outsell the others. My friend John over at Front Page Tech, he's been all over the Twitter and the YouTube making big bets and shouting from the hilltops that the cheaper LCD model is going to outpace the more expensive 6.5 and 5.8 inch OLED models. Now, John's a good friend of mine. John's a good friend of mine, friend of the channel. He definitely does know his stuff, but I have to disagree with him on this one. There's absolutely no evidence from the past that indicates Apple consumers will go for a cheaper, less feature rich option when the phones are released later this year. Perhaps Apple's trying to make some inroads to other market segments, but the existing Apple customer base will not buy a budget iPhone. We can take last year's releases as the most recent evidence of this. I, for one, went on record saying the iPhone 10 would be a flop because nobody's gonna pay $1,000 for a phone, and I was wrong. Even though there were much cheaper iPhone options out there from the 8 and 8 Plus to the 6S and the 6S Plus and the SE and all that kind of stuff, the iPhone 10 consistently outsold all of the models from launch through quarter one of 2018. To really understand fully why the LCD phones will not outsell the premium models, we need to look in two places. First, we need to look at Apple's sales history for their phones. It's widely known that Apple has tried to sell a budget phone in the past, and that did uh, not go so well at all. The iPhone 5C came in a ton of really fun colors and it had cool cases and all that kind of stuff. But despite all that, it's safe to say that the iPhone 5C was a flop. It clung to life as the phone a parent might give a child, or as the phone that an older person might get because they're not willing to pay all that money for the real iPhone. The aforementioned sales of the iPhone 10 also indicates a consumer that is not at all interested in economy iPhones. The average Apple consumer sees the iPhone as a status symbol or a marker of success or whatever, purchasing a budget model iPhone will not appeal to that Apple consumer. The typical Apple consumer will not consider a budget option because of the signal that sends about who they are, what their status is. These are people who are willing to spend hundreds more on Apple products when there are many, many other options available for much more reasonable prices. For example, you can get a better spec PC laptop for hundreds less than a MacBook Pro, but the Apple consumer won't even go there. The OnePlus 6 and other budget flagship killer phones of days gone by cost half of what the iPhone 10 cost, but the iPhone 10 still outsold all comers in the first six months of its release. People, were, people bought it, no matter what it's cost. But all of this is still armchair market analysis. So I went and did some research. I got a sense of who the real Apple consumer is and why they buy what they buy, what they want, and why they want it. Once we look into this info, I think it's gonna become really clear that the existing Apple consumer does not want a budget option. The misstep in logic of those who think the cheaper iPhone will outsell the more expensive premium models here is believing perhaps that Apple consumers and consumers of other types of phones think the same and have the same priorities and goals when making their purchase decisions. So who is the Apple customer, or more specifically, let's just get down to who is the iPhone customer. I found a breakdown of the target demographic on researchmethodology.com. I'll put that down in the description below. The research shows a pretty complete picture. iPhone customers are primarily urban dwellers, ages 25 to 45, both male and female. They're categorized as high earners, professionals, managers, executives. This is important. The perceived benefits they get from the iPhone include sense of achievement and belonging, self-expression, speed of service, advanced features and capabilities. Their personality type 
is described as determined and ambitious, and they're comprised of middle and upper class consumers described as resigned aspirers, succeeders, and explorers. Now tell me, does that sound like a customer base that's going to look at this year's iPhone offerings and decide, ah, I'll just go with the cheaper one, why not? No, no, it does not. These are people who buy the best because they need to signal, smoke signal maybe, that they are worthy of the social status they either aspire to or have already attained. It may be, as I said, that Apple's trying to develop a new demographic with this LCD offering, but based on past performance of the budget iPhone models that we've had and the success of the iPhone X, I don't see any way they're going to transition their existing customer base to purchasing anything less than their flagship product. If the cheap iPhone sells at all, it will be to a customer base that Apple does not yet serve, maybe international, something like that, but not their regular customer base. So what do you guys think? I was, you know, I kind of had this thought in my head. And as I did some research and reading, it kind of crystallized for me. I just don't see the LCD iPhone doing anything at all. I don't know why they're bothering, but I'm not Tim Cook, am I? So let's talk about it down in the comments. Let me know what you think. I'm really interested to see what we all think. Thanks so very much for being here. If this was your first time here and you want to come back again, you want to see me, you want to talk about these kinds of things, then there are ways that you can do that that I'm sure you're somewhat familiar with. So go on and do it. If you've been here before, you know, I love you. It's good to be back. It's good to see all your beautiful faces again, if I can steal a line from Phil DeFranco. Yeah. So anyway, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is painfully honest tech tech. So honest. It hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.